All right, welcome back. So now that we have configured our machines to be able to receive whatever new manifests have been added to the Git repository, let's introduce Hira. Let's clear the screen and Hira, it's written like this. This is how Puppet stores different configuration variables. And in Chef, we use the concept of data bags, and data bags also had a way of encrypting data so that it is not available except when you decrypt it. Puppet also has a way of storing variables and encrypting those variables, which is called Puppet Hira. The important difference between Puppet Hira and Chef data bags and Ansible Vault is that Hira can store both the encrypted and the unencrypted variables. In the same file we're gonna see how we can do that but this is in my opinion this is a very important advantage because you no longer need to store different variables in different files some of them are encrypted some of them are not encrypted you, you can just encrypt the variables that you want and leave the other variables unencrypted so that you only have one file for all your variable storage needs you can also opt to split variables that need to be encrypted in a file and variables that do not need to be encrypted or that are less important in another file. It's up to you, but the option is available. So let's see how Hira is installed and how it can be used. Hira stores your data in regular JSON, YAML, or eYAML files. You can further reference those variables in your manifest files. But the configuration itself for Hira is stored in a YAML file that is available by default in, let's have a look, in the production directory, we have here a file that is called hira.yaml. This is the default file for Hira. And as you can see, you have here the defaults and the defaults here, this is just a YAML file. If you don't know about YAML, we have discussed it in Ansible mini course. So you can have a look at this mini course if you haven't followed it. YAML is just a simple data serialization format, just like JSON, but it's more human readable. Here we have two main standards. We have the defaults and we have the hierarchy. The defaults is going to store all the YAML or the JSON files in a data diary that's called data. This is the default. We can, all, of course, you can change it as you wish. Let's leave it at the default for this lab. So in the data, you might have one or more YAML files or JSON files or eYAML files containing your variables. And then we have the hierarchy. The hierarchy here is how Hira is going to look for your variables. So let's say that you have a manifest file or you have a template and you have referenced a variable that is called my name, for example. So in which file will Hira look for a variable that is called my name? What if you have two different files and each of them has a version of your my name variable? The hierarchy specifies which file will take precedence over the other. In other words, here we have, for example, a YAML file that is inside a path nodes, then trusted search name dot YAML. This is going to be substituted for some value. This is a file that ends in dot YAML, and this is another file that is called common dot YAML. So if you if, if both of those files contain the same variable name, then this file is going to take precedence over this one, which means that if YAML found the variable that you want in this file, it's going to take whatever value stored inside this variable and it's going to ignore any variables that come after it in this file, common.yaml. So actually, a best practice is not to have variable name collisions. This is a best practice. Do not use the same variable name in different files to avoid any confusion and to avoid any incorrect values brought into your manifests or to your templates. But if you must do that, if you must use more than one variable with the same name, then remember that this hierarchy is what defines how Hira is going to look for your variable. Okay, so that is how Hira looks like, and that is how Hira stores your variables. Now let's see how we can use it to store a variable. So it is referencing here a file that is called common.yaml. This file does not yet exist. So let's create it. Common.yaml. Okay. And all YAML files can start with a triple hyphen, just like that, just to indicate that this is a YAML file. I can add here a variable that is called my name, and let's give it the value of Ahmad. You can optionally add the double quotes. If you don't want to add them, that's okay. But it's a best practice to add double quotes so that if you have any special characters, 
they are going to be correctly stored. Okay, so now I have a file that is called that is called common.yaml and I have a variable that is called my name. I need to go to slash vagrant production and of course add whatever changes we're done to this repository get commit dash m adds a new where uh, let's say add commons dot yaml variables file get push okay and now I can go to slash edc puppet labs code environments production okay get pull all right and then I can from anywhere inside my machine not specifically inside the production directory I can issue the following command sudo puppet lookup dash dash environment and this is a new command line argument or option that we haven't seen before the environment specifies the environment that you want puppet to reference when it executes this command remember in a previous lecture in this mini course we mentioned that puppet can have as many environments as you want the default one is production but you can have a debugging a testing a a staging a, de a development environment as long as they are all placed in slash edc slash puppet labs slash code slash environments you can have whatever environments each one is going to have its specific directory and you can reference whatever environment you want by using dash dash environment followed by the environment name in our case the default environment is production so i so if i omitted this dash dash environment option it's still gonna work as expected but i'm just adding it here for demonstration purposes now let's add my name variable press enter okay now we have the name correctly given to us ahmed this means that puppet has correctly referenced the common.yaml file it used hira to get this variable for us and it got it from the common.yaml file now what if you want to use this in a manifest file let's go to our code editor and let's go let's create a new file a new manifest file and let's name it variable dash test dot pp or any file name that you desire and let's add the following resource file this file is going to be stored in slash home slash vagrant slash let's say my underscore name dot text notice here that we are using the other way of specifying the target path of the file resource which is by adding it to the title of the resource instead of adding a path attribute remember both of them work equally ensure that this is a file this is redundant because the default is to ensure that it's a file I can say if I change this to directory for example it's going to create a directory with the name my underscore name dot text so ensure file is going to ensure that this is a file not anything else now the content I want the content to be the content of the variable that I have created so I am going to use a function provided by puppet which is called lookup then give it the name of your variable optionally followed by the type which is string again this is redundant I can just look up my name but adding a string or adding the variable type at the end will ensure that you are referencing the correct variable because puppet allows you to store many kinds of different variables variable types like strings booleans numbers and so on so adding string ensures that you as the reader or the user of this manifest know what type of variable you are using okay so this is going to create a file that is called my name.txt and it's going to have my name variable whatever was inside this variable inside this file so let's go to our directory and ensure that this file gets into to the repository so that we can pull it get commit dash m adds a variables let's say adam as a manifest for testing hira get push okay now if we get to slash edc slash puppet labs code environments production sudo get pull all right and let's sudo 
pop it, apply manifests, variable dash test dot pp. All right, now if you go to our home directory, we should find the file that is called my name.txt. And inside this file, you're gonna see that we had the variable, the value or inside that was stored inside the variable, which is Ahmed. So this is how you can reference any variable inside higher file inside the manifest. This can be added either here or here in the title, you can add it anywhere in your manifest file. You can also add it to a template. We are going to cover templates later when we start building our mean stack. So that is how you store simple variables inside a higher file. What about variables that need to be encrypted? What about variables that contain sensitive data like usernames, passwords, API keys, and so on? How can we store those variables? Well, this can be done by an industry standard method, which is called GNU PG. I'm sure you've heard about it before. This is an industry standard way of encrypting data. We have stopped at the need to store encrypted data or sensitive data inside Hira. And we've mentioned before that Hira is capable of storing both encrypted and unencrypted data in the same file. And it will encrypt data using the industry standard GNU PG, which stands for GNU Privacy Guard. And in order to use that, we will need to uninstall some prerequisites on each machine that is going to use encrypted data. So let's start by installing three gems and we're gonna use the Ruby gem binary that is provided by Puppet. We have mentioned before that Puppet uses um, Ruby as its domain specific language. So when Puppet gets installed, it installs automatically Ruby and the Ruby gem command. Gem is the package manager of Ruby, just like pip for Python and npm for node. It installs the gem binary, which is used to install and manage different Ruby packages. So let's start by installing ggpgme. Right, and then the Hira eml. And finally, the Hira dash eml dash gpg. Now you are ready to install or to use the encrypted data inside Hira. But before we can do that, we will need to create a pair of private public keys. This can be done using the gpg command. This is a Linux command, not specific for Puppet. And it is used to create a, a private public key pair. So gpg dash dash gen dash key. It's gonna ask you for some important questions like your name, your email address. These are going to be used when you encrypt the data. Pressing enter, okay, press O. It's gonna take some time. I'm gonna ask you for a passphrase. I'm gonna choose an empty passphrase and yes, protection is not needed. Protection is not needed. It's gonna take some time to generate the key pair. Right, and the key has been generated successfully. The next step is to edit the hira.yaml file to inform Puppet about our new secret file before starting to use it. So we're gonna go to our hira.yaml file and we are going to add the following. In the hierarchy, name, secret data. This is the file that's gonna contain the data that we need to be encrypted. We need to add a lookup key to inform Hira that this is gonna be an EML file. So it's EML underscore lookup underscore key and path, let's call it secrets dot EML. Remember this file can contain both encrypted un and unencrypted data. We're gonna see both in a moment. Then options gpg gnu pg home and give it the home of the gnu pg key pair that we have just created which will be located in slash home slash vagrant dot gnu pg this is the directory that contains the key pair that we created All right now we can go to the terminal let's clear the screen and we can 
issue the following command to start editing the secrets file. It's a long one, so I'm gonna write it slowly. sudo slash opt slash puppet labs slash puppet bin eml then edit this is the subcommand gpg dash always dash trust dash dash gpg dash recipients this is why we had to write the email address because this is the email address that is going to be used as the recipient of this key okay now let's give it the path to our secrets.eml file which is going to be created for us slash vagrant slash production data and secrets dot eml all right it's gonna first ask you for the default editor that you want to use i'm gonna use vim you can use whatever editor you want all right this is the file you can add whatever variables you want right after those triple hyphens the same way you add it to any yaml file except for a small change let's say that you want to add something that is called let's say api key for example if you want to add this key or this variable or this value you'll have to use the following format dec colon colon gpg then open a pair of square brackets followed by an exclamation mark and anything between those square brackets is going to be encrypted so api key is and let's say this key is secrets let's add another key or another variable that is not encrypted let's say api name this is not encrypted so i can add it just like this this is not secret all right now let's save this file and if we try to cat this file now slash vagrant slash production data secrets you're gonna see that i now have two variables api key and not a set it is now encrypted it's obfuscated you have no way of knowing what this variable contains while the other variable does contain data that is not encrypted api underscore name this is not secret so this is how hira can store both an encrypted and an unencrypted variable in the same file all right so what if you want to look up this what if you want to know what this variable contained first you will need to commit whatever was inside production you have to commit this file to be inside the correct directory which is slash edc slash puppet labs slash code slash environment slash production so in order to do that we are going to first git add everything git commit dash m adds the secrets dot eml file git push now let's go to the default directory where puppet expects to find the hira configuration and the hira files so slash e c slash puppet labs slash code environments production sudo git pull all right now from anywhere inside your machine you can write sudo just the same way you looked up the variable look up api there underscore key okay this key is secret and if you want to look at api underscore name this is going to also be brought to you this is not secret so both of them can be brought using the same function and this same function can be used anywhere inside your manifest file here the same way you did it in the variable test file so why not we try that let's try that out content look up let's add here api underscore key all right and let's again go to slash vagrant slash production get add everything git commit dash m adds an encrypted variable in a manifest file okay git push okay let's just 
go to the app arrow okay get pull so do get pull all right and let's now issue sudo puppet apply manifests variables dash test to pp all right if we go to let's clear the screen let's go to our home directory and if we cat my name my underscore name the text gonna find that this key is secret it has been correctly unencrypted or decrypted using hira and using the private public key that we have created and the, the value of the variable has been correctly brought and added to the file. This same way we can use those encrypted data in all our manifest files and in all our templates. And now we just have one last thing before we start building our mean stack, which is how to add this key or how to instruct other nodes in the environment or in the stack to use this key to be able to access higher data. Well, you will have to export this key and import it to each and every machine in your environment. This has to be done only once. So in order to do that, we are going to issue the following command, sudo bash dash C in order to use this command because this is going to redirect to a file using sudo. So we'll have to use bash dash C gpg dash dash export dash secret dash key dash a then the email address and redirect to key.txt just like that now you have a new file in your home directory that is called key.txt and it contains the private key you can have a copy of this private key just like that okay just take a copy and let's go to each and every machine in our stack and add this key so inside the database then key.txt add this key save use the following command to import it gpg dash dash import key.txt okay and remove the key of course because it's not safe to have the private key in a text file like this Go to the web, go to the app, again, vi key.txt, add the key, gpg dash dash import key.txt, remove the key, finally the web machine, vi key.txt, add the key gpg dash dash import key dot text and rm key dot text and the final thing here since we have already imported all the keys is to install the prerequisites so let's go to the vagrom file and let's add the gem commands here i'm gonna add it to the app right after this here just to make sure that all the machines are having the correct gem files to be able to use Hira. Add it here to the app and to the database. And although I'm not gonna use it on the web machine, but just add it in case you need it. Just to be able to use Hira encrypted data whenever possible. However, there is a small note that I would like to make about CentOS machines which is that in order to run those commands, you will need to install the development tools. This is specific to CentOS and specific to CentOS when installed on Vagrant using this box because this box by default does not come with the development tools, which include the, G's, the, GNU, -C, the GNU C compiler and other tools. So I'm gonna install them by using yum-y group install development tools. Again, this is specific to CentOS machines. I'm gonna add it to the app and to the web right before I start installing the gems. Now let's go to our terminal and vagrant provision db. All right, vagrant provision app.
and finally the web. All right, now all the machines are ready to use Hira data and Hira encrypted data. We are now fully ready to start building our mean stack using Puppet. We are gonna start doing this in the next lecture. So until then, take care.